So, hello, welcome today. This is a video uh, reviewing a new file system that I've been given quite recently called the Edge File X7. And from what I know from on this file, it is a minimum taper file. Um, it's got some good points. It's also got some downsides, which we'll get into further on down uh, the, the video itself. But overall, it's, it's quite a nice file. This case is a, a case of an upper left six. It's got four canals. We found the MV2. And I think the best thing to do is just get straight into it. So I had previously temporary dressed this tooth. This patient had come in with um, toothache um, for, I think it was an endodontic consultation. And um, usually with these consultations, all we tend to do is we uh, just have a little chin wag, but this patient was actively in pain. So I accessed the tooth. And then we were also concerned about, concerned about its restorability. So we got a filling in the tooth and made sure it was actually restorable. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to use a size 10k file down the palatal canal. Now, <clears throat> I always go for the palatal canal because usually it's the largest and easiest canal to shape. So in this case, we found that the working length is 23 millimeters and I'm going to use this Edge File X7 1704 Glide Path file. So the Glide Path file, actually what we do is we're going to shape um, the canal um, to the working length that, of what's seen of zero on the on the apex locator essentially. So with this glide path file, we're going to do it up to a, a, a 23. Contrast that with the further shaping files. This is a 2004. The working length we're going to shape this to is whatever you found zero on the apex locator minus uh, 0.5 a millimeter. And this is going to account for the apical constriction. And you know, I noticed with this file straight away that it cuts really, really nice. And some people aren't too keen on really, really grabby files. They like, like a Wave 1 Gold isn't so grabby. It doesn't want to pull itself down uh, the root canal. But if you feel like you're confident with root canals and you, you like a file that wants to get down the root canal nicely, again, this is, this is a really, really nice file. Of course, when you have a, a, a rotary file, which is, which is a bit grabby, I'm not saying it's grabby, it, it, it does want to go into the root canal. You've got to make sure you've got a, a nice finger rest there so you don't um, go past the, the, the working length. And um, of course, with these, uh, with these smaller taper files, these 04 tapers, I like to go a little bit um, uh, a higher diameter than, than say with my the high flex I usually use. So in this case, we're using a, a 3004, mainly for obturation uh, reasons. We've shaped the, the platal canal. We are now moving on to the DB canal. Again, psychological thing. I know the MB is going to be a pain in the backside. So the DB is the second easiest file to get uh, the canal to get down. So I'm so I'm making sure I get down this DB, you know, so I'm using my apex locator here with a size 10 K file and we're getting a nice zero reading here. And as I pull the K file out to measure, the working length is 22. So again, we're, we're really, really moving on. And most of my root canals are two hours long. And when I feel like I'm shaping really, really nicely and getting down those working lengths really, really quickly, I'm feeling like, yeah, nice one. Let's 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 uh, let's let's get on with this. And and essentially, the uh, the, the filing protocol is exactly the same as uh, the palatal canal. Again, really, really important. Lots and lots and lots of irrigation. So two canals shaped going well now I'm going to negotiate or try to negotiate down the mesia buccal canal with my size 10k file and straight away I can feel that the uh, the MB canal is is really really uh, calcified or sclerosed and and the the, uh, the the size 10k file is struggling to reach past 16 millimeters and we know it's 60 millimeters because that's where the flutes end on this K file. So if I feel like I'm struggling to get down a canal, 
uh, a super super tip here is to get a wider diameter file in this case we're using the uh, the edge file glide path file um, a millimeter away from as far as you can get with your hand file in this case it's 50 millimeters and what I'm doing there is I'm opening up the kernel third and I'm making um, enough space for the the file to reach uh, further and as you notice here I put the size 10 K file into the mesobuchal canal and now it's reaching quite nicely. So the moment um, the apex locator, and you might be able to hear this, is it's it's sort of firing off erroneously and for some reason I'm not entirely sure why um, the apex locator is showing zero, not zero, through, not through. And then at that moment I realized that my uh, canal space is not uh, full of irrigants. So again, really, really important. Some some um, apex locators like a dry canal. In my case, the apex locator likes a, a wet canal. All I have to do is just fill the canal up with my Irreflex tip and straight away the apex locator is, is working quite nicely. So we're going to use some really, really careful watch winding motion here with the hand file and we're just kind of just feeling for that uh, for that zero reading. A lot of the time with the zero reading as well, I like to push the size 10K file through the apex and then back it up rather than getting up to the zero. I feel like it gets a more accurate result. And here we can see that the working length is 20.5. So the same as before, we're gonna get our glide path file, our 1704, and we're going to shape it up to the zero reading on the apex locator. So we're gonna shape it up to the 20.5 and you know it, it works really really well this um this 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 glide path file um and we're just gonna finish it up same again with the 20.04 and the 30.04 at 20 so it's minus 0.5 and again we're going to account for the apical constriction because usually the apical constriction, the bit that you want to obturate up to, is not the same as the radiographic apex or the or the sort of flare outer flaring. So we're we're absolutely motoring along here, and we've got all three canals shaped, and we're now looking for the MB2 canal, and I kind of think I can see an MB2. I can, I'm looking at the sort of the developmental lines on the on the on the pulp chamber floor. Um, obviously, this helps with uh, a microscope as well. I think with just normal eye eyeballing this, it'd be completely impossible. And we can kind of see maybe there's like a, a suggestion of an opening here, but um, at the moment my hand file just um, can only just sort of negotiate maybe the first one millimeter or two millimeters and um, you know if i were to uh, use the hand file um, quite a lot in this place there's a there's a risk of uh, separation so what i'm going to use now is some diamond coated ultrasonic tips and what this does is it just very very carefully removes the dentin around this orifice of course you could use a uh, a um, fast hand piece but again i feel like using these diamond coated tips um, you have a lot more control and there's less less risk of um, perforation. And as you can see here now, the orifice is, is much more uh, open and we can start to negotiate down uh, the, 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 the canal with this size 10K file, but it's still finding it difficult to negotiate. So we pull out the big guns, we use these D-finders. These D-finders are absolutely fantastic. Okay, if you're struggling to get down um, any kind of root canal, we use these D finders at a size 21, so it's a bit more stiffness. And um, here you can see that it's that it w with a little bit of very, very judicious um, uh, watch winding technique, the D finder is now starting to reach a bit further, but we're getting now this hard stop. So the D finder is getting stuck at some point. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, um, it's getting to 16. Maybe we should use a higher diameter um, file here, maybe at 15, so a millimeter away from as far as we can go to try and open up this canal space. I think my main concern, and this is what we were alluding to at the start here with these glide path files, is these glide path files are, notice the difference in thickness between the uh, the, the D finder here and the glide path file. And I'm, I'm, I'm slightly concerned here that the difference in diameter might make it struggle for this glide path file to get to length. So 
Regardless of that fact, we're going to do some coronal shaping with this uh, with this glide path file. And super super careful. Don't be too um, clever and and go past the, the 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 furthest point you've got with your hand file because you can uh, fracture the file. And then we're going to get the definer in again and see if we can get any further. Okay, so super 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 careful here because when I can feel a hard stop on um, uh, with, with a fan file. I'm thinking to myself, is the tooth calcified or does the MB1 and the MB2 join? And what I don't want to do is I don't want to push this D-finder um, uh, too far around an acute bend if there is a join and then fracture the file because once you fracture the file, you know, it's 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 it, it's a much, much poorer prognosis for the tooth over the long term. Again, we're just going to do a, um, an apex locator check pull, but it's still showing it's nowhere near the apex. And if we um, pull out this definer, we can see that we've only really advanced a millimeter further. So I'm going to um, get a higher diameter definer here now, and I'm going to maybe um, shape the, uh, the the canal space a, a, a little bit more as if as if I would with um, you know like with a, with a rotary file to try and open up that space and again just see how far I've got here and um, once I pull this definer out I'm pretty sure what we find is we haven't got any further but there is a small little bend okay so have a little look at the measurements here we can see that again we're about at 17 so I can feel a hard stop. There's a little bend in the, the D-Finder and I'm thinking maybe there's a join here. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more shaping with my size 16. Everything's with the benefit of hindsight, by the way, because now I know there is a join, okay? But at this point, I wasn't too sure and this could still be a calcify canal, which has got its own main canal, no join at all. So, um, because I've used the higher diameter glide path file, I'm now going to um, use uh, an even higher diameter 2004 file at 14 millimeters. And this is, again, I'm just really trying to open up the coronal third to see if this tooth is calcified and the hand files are getting stuck further up. I want to release that grip of the, of the uh, dentin around this hand file. And now I'm using a size 10K file. I have managed to get to zero there. And then when I pull it out, you can see that there's an obvious bend in the in the file here where the MB2 is joining on to the MB1. So this is a this is a really good sign. And then just to confirm that, what I'm going to do is going to aspirate and irrigate some irrigants into both canals. And you can see that they both drain and fill at the same time. So this is a really really good sign because you know that you've shaped all of the canals. The MB2 joins, so now we can sort of adjust for that. Now we're going to just do a cone fit uh, radiograph. I'm going to fit the cones. Remember, the cones are going to be minus 0.5 from your zero on your apex locator. And what I like to do is I like to just snip the ends off these cones because um, one, they kind of get in the way when we take an x-ray because sometimes when you fold the, uh, the rubber dam over and you take the x-ray, the rubber dam can kind of pull the GP point out. Another really, really good reason to snip the ends of the cones is that when you are obturating, you know at the point where the, 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 the GP is going to need to be pushed to for it to know that you've got that GP at the working length. Because sometimes when you're using um, sealer, you can get a vapor lock and, and obviously you've not pushed the cone down uh, far enough. So I think this is a really, really good way of measuring. It isn't foolproof, of course, because sometimes, you know, you've got that palatal there, which is kind of off to the side. It isn't, hasn't got any obvious um, sort of marker where it should be, but it's just a nice, nice little guide. So all the GP points are in, and we can see that the cone fit radiograph um, shows that there is uh, the, the MB and the palatal is, are obviously short, okay? You might have seen my other um, uh, videos, a Race to the Apex, or the 10 best uh, root canal tips, and it talks about you know knowing where you are at the apex but you can see obvious canal space here on the palatal and the mb is just 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 a little bit too further away from the radiographic apex that i'm quite comfortable with so a lot of the time what i'll do is i'll just 
pull the GP points out and I will recheck the working length. So I'm just going to get a uh, apex locator here um, with a size 10k file and just recheck uh, the working length. And in fact, when we rechecked, um, I'd, I, had, I had not uh, correctly um, uh, recorded the uh, working length. So I reshaped both canals and then once I've reshaped them, lots and lots of irrigants, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take another comb fit radiograph. And now it looks looks fantastic, it looks really, really nice. And um, you know, the temptation not to do this um, is, is, is big, okay, but I think it, it's in the patient's best interest to make sure you're at the right working length. And also, you know, it's a nice bit of satisfaction there that you're doing the right thing. Um, I, you know, you used to kind of think to yourself, well, I'll, I'll, at university we were taught that, you know, if you're a bit two millimeters off, adjust for that two millimeters, don't take another comb fit and, and, and go, to, go to obturation. But I think in, in these day and ages, you know, you just it's just it's just poor practice. And I think it's always best to retake and make sure the last thing we need to do um, before the obturation is to activate the irrigants. I'm going to use this 18th um, mobile uh, uh, ultrasonic activator here. And you can see that I've filled the, um, the canal space with sodium hypochlorite mixed with atrigenate. Okay, so that's like a chelate, like EDTA, and then I'm activating this irrigant. You can see that the irrigant's becoming all like a, like a pond water kind of um, situation here. And you notice that that's all of the muck that's been sort of vibrated or ultrasonic here, or cavitated off the walls of the canal. And finally, I'm just gonna use uh, uh, some paper points just to dry off the canal space. It's always good to get your uh, irrigant tip and just to aspirate the the fluid first and then use your paper points because you'll just be using about 50,000 paper points until it's dry. And then in this case, I'm using AH plus. I'm using AH plus in this case because um, I probably, I might use heat with this, um, with, this, uh, with this case. I'm not entirely sure if I am or not. Um, but I, I might use heat with this and, and you a lot of the time I'm using a bioceramic but you can't use uh, heat with a bioceramic and it's just super super simple you know a lot of the time I will uh, sort of do a little bit of a double dip when I uh, uh, sort of paint the H plus this is a resin sealer onto my GP point I'll fit it to length feel for tug back out and in and that kind of pushes the uh the the sealer into all the little nooks and crannies and i'm just going to burn it off with a heated plugger and then i'm going to push it down with uh with my mach 2 plugger and i say this once a thousand times i used to be really really careful about pushing the gp now um now i just get the Mach 2 plugger there and I give it a really, really, really hard push and that's gonna push the GP point um, really, really far into all the little um, nooks and crannies. Obviously with a resin sealer, it's difficult to remove the excess and in this case, super top tip, we're gonna use isopropyl alcohol here just to clean out all the resin. And then a further, further irrigant with isopropyl alcohol bit more of a clean because the isopropyl alcohol is, uh, is is quite tenacious give it a good clean out and then the final thing to do I mean I suppose in a way that this now is root canal this tooth we're gonna give it a bit more of a push and then we're gonna tidy this up and, 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 and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tidy it up by using our heated plugger and um, I suppose in a way um, I, I do this for two reasons one is because I think it looks pretty um, and I know you're not really supposed to do things to make things look pretty, but uh, uh, mainly an another reason why I like to tidy up uh, the, the coronal orifices after we've done the root canal is that um, you can uh, place your uh, your sealer down there. So I'm using like a, a, a um, I'm using a light cured uh, GIC, so that can sort of sit in the well. And another reason as well is if you've got like excess GP sticking out of the coronal orifice, when you try to compact that right down, it can it can hinder you from packing the GP um, right right down, and, and you might feel like you're really pushing down on it. But if it's not packed in down, you might get voids in the in the obturation. And then finally, like I say, we're going to use this uh, Vitribond. This is a like your GIC in the uh, in the coronal orifices. For some reason, I really only use this stuff now in in molars. 
Um, I feel like in, in single rooted teeth, like centrals, I can get a, a nice um, uh, bulk fill SDR down there. Um, uh, but for some reason, I just, I just, I just like using uh, uh, some sort of uh, GIC in the coronal orifices of the tooth. And as you can see here with the post-op, it looks gorgeous. You know, we've got a tiny little bit of a sealer puff on the palatal there. Um, you know, we're, we've, we've conformed quite nicely to the root canal. We've got a nice uh, minimum prep. And overall, I'm, I'm quite happy with these files. I think my main concern with these files, and if, um, if you know, the people at, uh, at, uh, at uh, Edge File are watching, I would say the Glide Path file is too large for a Glide Path file. That's just my opinion. Um, you know, uh, at the moment, I'm using a High Flex 1503. Um, I think the problem with the High Flex 1503 is, is I've had uh, maybe one or two uh, file fractures. Now, both those file fractures, um, the tip had come away and it had irrigated out straight away. Um, so I suppose it's a bit of a way up, isn't it? And, then, and I know a lot of endodontists don't use one file system. So this Edge File X7 is really, really, really nice. I like the taper on it. I like the taper that it's, it is thin, but it's not too thin because I feel like with a, a really, really narrow tapered um, file system, they can just be really, really t difficult to obturate. And then when you take your post off, it just doesn't look nice and pretty. And um, I know that's not the most important thing, but you, you do want your post ops to look nice and pretty. And there you have it. Another video. You know, um, I, I've got a really, really good uh, response from my last video. My last video I uh, took me ages to make, but I really, really enjoyed it. My next video is going to be on endodontic access. Um, it's going to be like the uh, best 10 tips for root canal, and hopefully you'll like that. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.